Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about color trends for 2024 in interior design, specifically looking at the Benjamin Moore color palette for 2024. Benjamin Moore releases a color palette every year. All the paint companies do, but in my opinion, Benjamin Wears is kind of the most cohesive, it's the most put together, it's kind of the one that a lot of people really look at. Sharon Williams has a really interesting one as well this year I thought was cool. Also selected a blue, spoiler alert, which so did Benjamin Moore for color of the year. Interesting, interesting. And yeah, so that's what we're gonna talk about. Now listen, if you love the colors in your home right now, don't paint your house, like you don't have to. But these are the colors that we're seeing trending in design and this is the stuff that's gonna start to show up in retailers near you. So yes, you might think that, you know, you might not like these colors, that's fine, you don't have to, but it does start to really impact the stuff you see in the shops and I think that's why this is important. So here it is. Here's the palette right here in all of its wonderful glory. And I wanna say, if I had to kind of sum up my impressions of this palette in a few words, I mean, obviously I don't have a few words, it's me, right? I'm gonna have to spend a lot more than just a few. But in a few words, I would say this feels very balanced. It feels very soft. It feels very cohesive, very different than last year's palette, to be honest with you, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. I found that it was a little disjointed and didn't feel like all these colors really worked together, in my personal opinion. But we do see some echoes of last year in this year's palette, but I feel like it's a bit more pulled back this year, which I like. So yeah, let's talk about that. So when I say balanced, I think a couple of different ways. First of all, half of this palette basically is warm and half of this palette is cool. And that's really interesting because, you know, if you look back at design, because everything Thing in design is sort of a reaction or an extension of what came before it. I'm a firm believer in that. And throughout the kind of late 2010s, we saw gray, cool interiors being really popular. Sophisticated, formal, moody, blues and grays were everywhere, right? And then we had a little thing called the, um, I don't know if you remember 2019, late 20, early 2020, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a great time for the planet. And so um, for that reason, we were all stuck inside. And I think we all looked around at these sad gray interiors and thought we can do better. Let's have a little bit more fun. And so palettes were leaned a lot more warm and they tended to be browns, beige, orange, red, pinks, just really warm and cozy. And even the greens and things were, which was very, very trendy in 2021. Here's their palette, if you don't remember, because why would you, except just me, I just memorized the palettes. Green was everywhere, but it was the warm greens, right? It was with that yellow undertone, those sort of olive colors. Those were really, really trendy. So everything was moving towards being much warmer than it had been before. So this palette, in my opinion, opinion feels a little bit more pulled back and a little bit more balanced. We're seeing a lot more complementary color pairings, which I'm going to talk about later, which is that blending of warm and cool together, which I think is really, really nice because palettes have felt so, so warm now for a couple of years. It makes sense that we're going to see a little bit more of a pullback. Let's, let's talk about last year's just for a hot second here because I didn't love it. Raspberry blush was the color of the year and that was very bold and a lot of these colors were very, very saturated. I think Benjamin Moore really got in on the joy trend, which is this idea of people sad interiors being so popular people were looking for big bold saturated color they wanted unapologetic color they wanted raspberry blush they wanted bright you know starry blue i think was another color right really bold and saturated color and that was cool but i think it was good for pops of color and not really great to do your entire room in and so i think they really got in on this joy trend of maximalism big bold bright kooky colors and that was fun and all but like the reality is is that you know you're not gonna paint your entire house raspberry blush most likely maybe you will because that's your personality and i love that for you but most people aren't gonna do it so it wasn't really approachable i think to be like a main wall color for most people this year they toned a lot of those colors down that's what i see in this palette i see a lot of balance between warm and cool but i see a lot of things that are a bit more desaturated a little bit more white black and gray added to some of these colors to make them a little bit more approachable that can be used for main wall colors which i think is a good thing still having fun with color, but just maybe making it a little bit more sensible and approachable for most people. Also, so another trend that's really popular right now, which is called color drenching. I don't know if you've heard of this. Basically, it's instead of painting your baseboards white and your ceiling white and, you know, maybe doing a different wall color, which is the traditional way of doing a room. Color drenching is a very monochromatic sort of look where you're combining uh, the baseboards, the walls, you're do the ceiling, you're doing everything one color. So you're picking a color and you're just doing everything in that one color. And it isn't always just 
a white or like a neutral, right? It can be something a little bit more bold, something that's, you know, maybe really dark or really moody or really bright. It, it can be a little bit different. It doesn't have to just be a white and doing the entire space in that color. Color drenching is very popular. Now listen, last year, those colors were really saturated. I think it might've been a bit overwhelming to do it. So this year, I think this is part of the story is really just dialing some of those color saturation back a little bit to make it more doable for you to do your entire room, baseboard, ceiling and all. I also will just add real quick that I would say it's balanced also because it represents all or a lot of the different colors in the color wheel. So 2021 was all about green and then 2023 was all over the place. But now in 2024, I feel like not only are we desaturating, but we're also balancing blues, greens, some reds, some pinks, some oranges, right? There are all those different colors, some purples even. We got a purple in here. It's less dominated by one particular color, which I think is really cool. So it's balanced around the color wheel, which again, opens up a lot of complementary and different sort of color schemes, which is neat. Okay, so let's talk about those warm colors, right? So we've got White Dove, Topaz, Teacup Rose, Honeybee, and Pristine. These are beautiful colors. Again, they're very different, but they're a little bit more dialed back from last year. But these are the warmer colors. You've got orange undertones, pink undertones, yellow undertones, even White Dove, which I believe is Benjamin Moore's, maybe don't quote me on this, but I think it's their most popular color period, full stop, game over. Like I think it's, one of their most popular colors for sure. Very popular white paint, got a slightly warm undertone, not as bright as uh, Chantilly Lace or Simply White, which are very, very popular. Little bit softer, that's what I mean. It's a little bit softer, not super bright, not super in your face, doesn't look like primer on your walls, which is my criticism personally of Chantilly Lace, but it just feels a little bit softer on the wall. I think White Dove is a gorgeous color and makes sense for this palette for that reason, but it does lean a little bit warm. It's got a little bit of warmth to it, which is nice to see. And then Honey Bee, Teacup Rose, and Topaz, I mean, those are obviously warm colors. You've got, you know, Topaz is very similar to last year, which was, there was a color called Cinnamon last year, but again, Cinnamon, a little bit more saturated. I think Topaz might be a little bit more approachable for more people. Pristine has this gorgeous sort of little pinky, sort of peachy sort of undertone to it. Same goes for Teacup Rose, except we're a little bit more, you know, we're, we're light, but we're not really an off-white at that point. Uh, well, I would say Pristine is sort of getting into the territory of off-white because it is quite light. Beautiful sort of peachy pinky color makes a ton of sense here. I think, you know, those two could work really, really well together because there's just a little bit of difference there, but uh, could go for something that's a little bit more of a monochromatic look using those two colors, which is cool. And then of course, heading over to the cool side, right? We have that equal balance. So we've got Blue Nova, which is their color of the year, which is this really gorgeous royal blue, similar to the Starry Night that we saw last year. But again, we're desaturating a little bit, which I think means you could do the whole wall in this color. You could make this a wall color if you chose to, again, if you're embracing that joyful use of color, but it's not gonna be so saturated as Starry Night or some of the other colors that we saw last year. I really like this one. Interesting to see blues making a comeback. Blue is a beautiful color. It makes sense in bathrooms. Again, like if you love blue and blue is sort of your color and you love it all the time, great. Colors go in and out of style, but all colors are you know, appropriate at different times, depending on what you like and your own sort of personal preference. I like Blue Nova. I think it's a really overall pretty good pick. I don't know if I would have made this the color of the year, but I think it makes sense to be in this palette because again, we're representing lots of different colors from all over the color wheel. Polar Sky, I think is really nice. It's kind of a little bit more of a sky blue. Could pair really, really well with uh, Blue Nova for sort of something that's a little bit more monochromatic. Sometimes people, by the way, think monochromatic means black or white. Sometimes they think it's using the exact same color over and over again in the space. It's not the exact same, right? You're blending different tints, tones, and shades of a particular color. So Polar Sky is a nice sort of tinted version, basically, of Blue Nova. So combining those two together could be really, really cute in something like a monochromatic space. So still playing in that blue space, but just different tints and tones of that same colored blue. Okay, so let's move on into some notable pairings from Benjamin Moore and also me because I'm a little bit kooky and decided to kind of go in and do a little bit of my own research with the old color wheel, as you know I love to do. So they've combined here in this photo, Pristine and Antique Pewter. It, I think this might be my favorite color of the bunch, in my personal opinion, just because it's like a soft brownish green, which I just love that color. Sorry, maybe I'm stuck in 2021 when apparently everything was about green, but like, I still love it. I still think it looks really beautiful. But again, it's green, but it's just got enough brown in it, I think, to um, ground it a little bit more, so it doesn't kind of scream 
like green green you know like it, it is green but it's sort of moving more towards that area well I would say regent green is a little bit more of an emerald it's cute some of these photos it looks kind of neat here but here they've paired pristine with antique pewter which I think is kind of cool and they also have topaz there in the chair I mean it's not the paint obviously it's an upholstered chair but it's not a coincidence that they're using topaz in that way I like this little combination I think this is really cute also remember that pristine has a little bit of a pink undertone to it and pink and green work really well together because pink is often a really just heavy tinted version of red and red and green although usually people think Christmas are really great together because they are complementary on the color wheel so you know that sort of pinky peachy green color I think combo is quite nice and this here is topaz now I wanted to show you guys this because this is an example of what I was talking about earlier with color drenching being such a popular trend where we're seeing that same color on the baseboards on the wall on the ceiling you can see that here is this a lot to put on your uh, on all your surfaces it's a lot it makes a statement it's a risk but you know no risk no reward I think it looks really cool here I mean it you know makes sense that it's a Benjamin Moore ad so obviously it's gonna look beautiful because it's been photographed and styled gorgeously but it gives you a really good idea of what color drenching is right so using that same sort of color on all sort of surfaces I think it looks really cool here but I really really love it where you compare it with white doves so looking at this photo here what they've done is obviously you've got that same topaz and white dove reflected in that rug down below which I think is cute but also this is what I think is neat people don't don't love orange sometimes because I think orange is like oof but when you put enough brown in it it starts to just sort of work really well with different wood tones and I think that's what this photo to me shows off really nicely is the wood on that staircase is very similar to the color of topaz right which is one of their colors and I think that is a thing that people forget when they're looking at orange because they think like orange like the fruit but actually a burnt those burnt oranges those different sort of dark brown those chocolates all those really in the color wheel are just sort of really similar to brown and when you add enough brown to some of those oranges it can start to work really well with all those different wood tones so I think the wood tone and the wood grain reflects really beautifully compared to the topaz that's on the wall also I wanted to show you this room right here I love this space and you know what I'm oftentimes I make fun of the sad beige children and the sad beige rooms on this channel as you guys know but this this is an example of how you can do color in a children's room now obviously again this is styled by Benjamin Moore so it looks beautiful but like there's no real like personality necessarily like you're not seeing the actual kid here obviously you're gonna have a basket full of toys and it's gonna be you know whatever kid stuff in the room but this at least for a base of a well-designed children's room I think is really cool and it's really colorful and I think that's really really cute combining some of these really interesting colors works really well and I will say this because again I'm a little bit weird like I like to take all the colors and sort of put them in a hex code which is sort of an online um, I won't bore you with all the details but I used a color picker to basically identify where all these colors are on a color wheel and when I popped in teacup rose what I thought was really interesting is when I selected an analogous color scheme so that would be three colors right next to each other on the color wheel what I thought was kind of interesting is you had honeybee very similar to something resembling honeybee and also this really gorgeous pink color as well which isn't reflected necessarily directly in the palette but I think you can really see in some of the decor items that they selected for that photo I don't think it's a coincidence that they've selected that analogous color scheme to work really well in this particular space they've added some neutrals obviously some white some sort of grounding sort of charcoal sort of color there or some things some blacks things that are really like those neutrals uh, to sort of balance out those three colors but I think it's really interesting that you've got that teacup rose and that honeybee as well as that pink color sort of reflected similarly in the same space in an analogous color scheme on the color wheel which I think is really cute also something similar I took this hazy lilac which I feel like personally Purple is an unloved color in interior design um, it can be really difficult color but this one you know it's just a little bit cooler you've got that little bit gray in there so that it really sort of doesn't make it scream like I don't know grimace you know what I mean like you've got something that's a little bit more desaturated a little bit dusty almost that's gonna kind of make sense for a lot more people but anyway pop that in the color wheel selected what its complement was which was what does it look like on the other side of the color wheel and it starts to reflect something quite similar to antique pewter now antique pewter I know I mentioned earlier was kind of more in the it's it's more sitting right between kind of a cool and a warm tone to me but I think it's interesting that these purple and green sort of they sit kind of opposite each other on the color wheel which again is not an accident also again playing with complementary colors again that connection between warm and cool if you take teacup rose and you pop that in and look for its complement it starts to look quite similar to polar sky which again I think is really neat so you've got kind of this pinky color and then on the opposite side you've got this blue color those colors would work really really well together uh, that teacup rose again it's like a little bit pinky a little bit orangey a little bit peachy and then you've got that really gorgeous sort of sky blue sitting opposite so by just 
Popping these into the color wheel, you know, you can start to see how color relates to one another. It helps so you understand the theory behind some of these palettes and you see why they start to look really, really good together. So I think that's really cute. I think it'd be int really interesting to see some uh, color palettes sort of combining those two colors, which I think I think it'll look cute. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, you got Blue Nova and Polar Sky, which again would be really beautiful to create a monochromatic moment. You can see they've done that here in sort of their advertising from Benjamin Moore. These two colors would work really, really well together because you can't oftentimes really go wrong with a gorgeous monochromatic space. If you just select a color and then just play with lots of different tints, tones, and shades, pairing them with a bunch of different neutrals and you can start to get something really, really cool going. And I think that these two colors obviously work really well together. So overall, my impressions of this color palette is that it feels more approachable than what we've seen in years past from Benjamin Moore. I really didn't love last year's because I felt that everything was very overly saturated and there was a lot of different colors that if you were to combine them all together, you could, in my opinion, go wrong. And so therefore it didn't really feel like a full palette. It didn't feel really cohesive. I don't feel that way about this palette. This is, I think, a really beautiful palette. It is combining colors from all over the color wheel. It's having fun with some of those big saturated colors, but dialing them back so that they still feel a little bit more approachable. So that is my personal opinion. Yes, of course, you know, you can mix different areas. There's some similarities between the last year's palette and this year's. That color Topaz, like I mentioned, is quite similar to Cinnamon. Blue Nova is quite similar to Starry Night. Tofino Sunset is quite similar to Teacup Rose. So they didn't necessarily completely throw last year's, you know, color palette out. I think this is an interesting extension of something a little bit more balanced and a little bit more approachable, which I think is a good thing. So let me know in the comments what your favorite color is from this palette. Do you like this one more than you like last year's? And I will also link here to last year's palette as well if you want to just learn a little bit more about my thoughts there. And uh, maybe there's some good ideas in that palette you can bring forward and combine with this one. So I will see you all in that video. See you all next time. Thanks. Bye.